Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a theme booster? Theme boosters were originally introduced back in Dominaria, but have been changed starting with Theros, where, among other things, they will have the possibility of containing exclusive standard legal rares. Made up of 35 cards of the same color and potentially containing two rares, in many ways theme boosters are akin to a double booster pack, though there's more going on beneath the surface when it comes to target audience and overall worth. And with Planeswalker decks no longer recurring after Theros, are theme booster packs now the proper gateway for new players into the game, or is there value and interest here for experienced players? What even are these and who are they for? Let's take a look. A theme booster contains the following. 35 Magic the Gathering cards of the same color from the titular set. Of those 35, 34 are a varying number of commons and uncommons. Unlike a draft booster, the ratio of commons to uncommons is not set. And thus each theme booster will have a different number of commons and uncommons within it. Theme boosters contain one rare slash mythic, however, one out of every 10 packs will have a second rare. So there is a one in 10 chance that a pack will have 33 common and uncommon cards instead of 34, and thus two rare slash mythics. Although Wizards of the Coast is no longer transparent about how much their products cost, these sell on the shelves of Target and Walmart for $7.99 each. So that is the price this video will use. The decks also do not come with foils or tokens, these no table required advertisements are double-sided. That's right, they didn't want to put a token on one side, they needed to say, just so that you get the message, that no table is required. Send a message. Well, yeah. Before I get to the exclusive rares possible in these theme boosters, let's go over the distinct qualities that separate them from a regular draft booster pack, namely, collation and theme. As I stated, the number of commons and uncommons is different within each theme booster, and this is because they are collated not just by color, but also by theme. What do I mean collated by theme? Well, there's no way to know for sure what the themes of a theme booster are, but supposedly, the commons and uncommons contained within a theme booster have some form of shared theme, not only with each other, but with the included rare slash mythic. It's a little hard to figure out what the themes are. I wish maybe they were listed somewhere, like on the back of the pack. For black, I suppose it was a sacrifice for sacrificing creatures, but that's what black does in this set especially. So it's hard to tell if that's just, you know, what black does, or if this was supposed to be a sacrifice theme. Maybe there's more I am not seeing, but this isn't quite the strong synergy so much as a controlled grouping. It's a neat thing to be able to accomplish, and in many ways, this reminds me of another Richard Garfield game. Keyforge, which offers complete and unique decks that are playable right out of the box in their equivalent of booster packs. Interestingly, Keyforge decks are more or less the same price as a theme booster, and I can't help but feel that maybe there was some initial trepidation about Keyforge when it was first coming out, and that might have spurred the exploration into creating collated booster packs, or maybe it's just a coincidence. But there's a lot that theme boosters lack when it comes to that particular comparison, and here is where I feel the theme booster struggles. First of all, these aren't decks, as they require lands to be playable out of the pack. I think that including a land base would have been extremely helpful to make this a product for new players, where they could just grab one off the shelf, open it up, and play. Sure, a local game store likely has a land station that they can grab 15 to 20 lands from, but to make this a booster draft alternative for new players, I think that having some lands included would have been a very nice touch. 
And I suppose that to me is reminiscent of a very old product from Wizards of the Coast that I always was rather fond of, starter decks, which were essentially three booster packs smooshed together with a chunk of lands thrown in. Now these old starter decks were far from playable out of the box, as they had cards of all five colors in them. But that's exactly where this collation method could be really nifty. Imagine if theme boosters offered you, for the price of three booster packs, a thematically collated and playable deck. Nothing extraordinary, I'm not talking challenger deck level here, but a starting point for new players or just a fun casual grab. I think most of the pieces are here. Grab it off the shelf, crack it open, get a game against a friend, but it's but missing a few key pieces. If pricing and contents were consistent, experienced players who do enjoy cracking packs could still find value in such starter decks as they'd be walking away with the same number of rares, making it a potential product for a wide range of players. And this largely is where I feel theme boosters fall short. While there is a 1 in 10 chance of getting two rare slash mythics in a theme booster, 9 out of 10 have only one. This means you are paying double the over-the-counter price of booster packs. Essentially, you are buying two booster packs, but you are getting half the rares. Even the card count is near identical, as two draft boosters will get you 30 cards, and one theme booster will get you 35. So, wow, the theme booster has five extra commons, but unless you are the one out of 10 with a second rare, you get half the rare slash mythics. Is that really a fair price to pay for color and vague theme coordination, there's another aspect to theme boosters, and that is exclusive rares that are standard legal. This once was an absolutely unheard of thing, but has become very commonplace throughout multiple products and promos. Cards that are standard legal, but not found in standard booster packs. Theme boosters have 10 of these exclusive cards. Now, these are not found in every theme booster. Rather, you have a chance at one as your rare. Each color has two potential exclusive rares, and these rares are standard legal. But as we have seen with the exclusive rares made for Planeswalker decks, game night boxes, and other products, the goal is to make them splashy and appealing to casuals who may not yet be good at playing Magic or deck building without having the cards actually become relevant in the format for fear of them becoming an in-demand card for competitive play. Now keep in mind when I say exclusive, there is a slim chance that one of these designed not to be standard playable quote-unquote exclusives might show up in the premium collector boosters. And I have long been in opposition to this practice as it essentially means such cards are designed mind to be bad, to be cards that can't handle themselves even at a Friday Night Magic Standard event, which in my evaluation makes them of no real use to new or existing players. Rather than a chance at an exclusive rare in each color, I would rather that the number of rares in this $8 product was guaranteed to be in line with the number I might get spending $8 on draft boosters rather than the chance at an exclusive rare, which was designed to be non-effective at my local game store's Friday Night Magic events. I would also rather that all standard legal cards, no matter how intentionally bad, be found within standard draft packs, but that is another topic. Final conclusion, nine out of 10 Magic the Gathering theme boosters are half the rares of two regular draft boosters, but cost the same price. They offer five additional commons, a collation by color, and a chance at exclusive standard cards which have been designed to be no good in standard. While it is possible these exclusive cards may one day accidentally be good, the keyword there is accident, as the ramifications of a theme booster exclusive being in demand for competitive play would be quite dire. As such, these exclusives have little, if anything, to offer. New players can still 
use this as an acceptable starting point, assuming they have both the knowledge to grab an ad land and access to a local game store to supply such basic land. Experienced players can grab a few and use them as a way to have a casual game of magic, adding lands, or possibly even mixing colors. It is unfortunate that a product that is embracing the concept of correlation so strongly does not apply that same correlation to the number of rares within, and as such, the grade here is a C. Satisfactory, I guess. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a comment. Do you buy theme boosters? If so, why? And if not, why not? Let me know in the comments below. Sadly, the Slippery Bogle isn't legal in Pioneer, but its long-lost twin of Glade Cover Scout is. This creature is in all the best opening hands we can hope for, a simple, untargetable 1-1 one -one that we can suit up with all sorts of powerful auras. We also get to play Basara Tower Archer, where for two green, we get a 2-1 hexproof body with the attitude.